My goal for this video is to allow y'all to have a better understanding of how you go from zero programming knowledge into getting an actual software development job. Because although for some people this may be obvious, for many others it can be very daunting and to have actually something laid out in your head about milestones that you need to hit in order to achieve that goal. It helps out a bit. Now I'm going to be sharing my personal experiences. I know there are thousands of different ways that one can go about getting a job and this whole entire process may be different to everybody but that's why I'm specifying this is my way of doing it and what I've learned and my takeaways from the whole entire process from going from zero programming knowledge to actually landing a software development job. And I'll be touching on a few other obvious ways on how to break into the industry that I didn't personally take myself. So just this is all my thoughts laid down into a video. If there's anything more specific that you want me to go into, there's a very good chance that I've made a video about it on my channel. I've talked about how I've gotten different internships, how I prepared for interviews and things of that nature. So be sure to check some of those out or you can just comment down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer your comment there. For starters, you need to have an ambition to code. I mean, if you don't have an ambition to code, then you're never going to learn how to actually code. And if you try to learn how to code without actually having an ambition to code, you're just going to be wasting time. Step number two, as obvious as it may seem, you need to learn how to code. Now, I personally started off learning how to code in college. I went for computer science, but there are also different degrees nowadays that you can go for. Software engineering, software development, anything in that realm that you can look at the curriculum and you see that they're teaching you how to code semester after semester. That's one way to learn how to code. But just know, if you're going for a computer science degree, it's not just all code. There is a lot more to it, and not only a computer science degree, but any college degree that you go for. So there are also alternative ways. I personally didn't learn a lick of iOS development in my college degree. I learned it online. Now, if you don't know, a couple weeks ago, I just put together this open source computer science degree. It's located over on my GitHub. Everything is linked over there. And that is essentially free courses available online for anyone to take. And that goes over anything that has to do with computer science in terms of math, theory, programming, so on and so forth. But if you want to dial it down even more, I would recommend checking out the sponsor of this video and that's Skillshare. I personally use Skillshare for a lot of marketing, business, photography, videography stuff, but they also have many courses in the data science realm, a lot of different web development courses, iOS development courses, and a lot of different coding courses anywhere from beginner to professional. I would definitely recommend taking a look. Actually, if you want to do that for free, there is a link at the top of the description. The first 500 people to sign up to Skillshare using that link get two months of Skillshare Premium. That helps me out, that helps y'all out, that's, that helps Skillshare out. So I'd appreciate y'all going down using that link and taking advantage of this opportunity. At the very least, check out what they have on their site to see if any of those categories interest you. And if they do, then great, you can get it for free. If they don't, then it's not for you. I understand. Once you learn how to code, what is the outcome here? So the outcome, of course, are your skills. You're gonna have applicable skills to show off to a potential employer or a client. And then you'll also have a portfolio to prove that you're actually able to do what you say you can do. I mean, it's no secret that learning how to code is the number one thing that you need to do before actually getting a software development job because if you don't know how to code, then it's gonna be a little bit hard. No matter how much of a sweet talker you are, to get an actual software development job. So uh, learn how to code. <laughs> now that you've learned how to code, you wanna move on to step number three, and that is preparing for the job search. Because you can't just go immediately applying to places and expect for them to hire you just because you have one or two things. You need to have essentially a whole entire layout of what you have to offer. I mean, if you think about it, any product launch has, that has been successful, there's a lot of hype built around it. There's a lot of preparation for that product launch. It's not like they just said, all right, here's the product. Let's slap it up on the website. Now we're ready to go. No, if that has ever been successful, please give me an example because that would be amazing. But if you want to liken your chances of actually landing a job, there are a few things that you can do. And for the record, this can be done while you are learning how to code. It doesn't need to be step-by-step -step chronologically as said in this video. A lot of this is just gonna intermingle together. Step number one is networking. So this one may be the most difficult simply because networking, you're like, I don't even know where to start. But if you are constantly asking questions and answering questions if you can over on Stack Overflow, although 
for newbies, Deck Overflow can be kind of brutal sometimes or be over on Twitter because Twitter's like the water cooler for a lot of software developers. That's why I'm over there. That's one of the only reasons. Okay, maybe not one of the only reasons, but it's definitely a big part of it. Just do your best to not be the stereotypical software developer who locks himself in a basement, doesn't interact with any humans, and actually have some soft skills, actually have the ability to talk to other people. You also need to make sure you have a good resume. And on this resume, you can show your education, whatever that may be. If you have particular skills, you wanna lay out your language that you use, your tools that you use, any frameworks that you may have used. And I would recommend listing products or projects that you have built. Name them if it's like a Hangman application in C++ and then have one or two bullet points explaining what it does. Maybe one, just a little description of what that project was all about because those are a few things that you're gonna be asked about when we get to step number four and that is the actual job search and going through the interview process. But another thing I would highly recommend, remember, some of these things may not be mandatory, but it definitely helps as long as you hold yourself professionally and you do things to a decent degree. LinkedIn, which is essentially your online resume, and then GitHub, which is essentially your online portfolio. And like I said, in all software developers need a portfolio video, make sure your code is neat and make sure you have a readme document that is well laid out, that describes what you learned building this, what the program actually does, and if it needs any particular runtime instructions, include those in the readme as well. So if I went, I downloaded, I would know exactly what commands to put in the console in order to run your application. Now that you've laid the groundwork, it's time for the job search. There are a few different ways to go about this. The number one way is that if you've built a network, communicate with that network that you are looking for a job right now, you're applying to different places, you want a job in your particular discipline. Also, did I mention under the learn how to code a step that you wanna make sure that you focus on a particular emphasis within software development? Whether that be a particular stack in web development, whether that be iOS development, whether that be Java work with Spring or what have you, Focus because you want to be good at something instead of decent at a lot of things. Alongside letting your network know that you're constantly looking for a job, you can also go to particular career fairs and then also apply online. This is how I got both of my internships or three of my internships. And one of those internships built me a relationship that allowed me to get my software engineering job that I currently work at today. So what I'm trying to say is don't sleep on those online applications. As long as you have some good groundwork laid out, a good looking resume and everything else that we talked about leading up to the job search, you're going to have the best chances that you can possibly have. Now, once you go through that process again and again and again and again and again, Maybe, hopefully, potentially one day you will get a call or an email and you are now in the interview process. So a lot of times this will go a few different ways, but for me, it essentially started off with an email to schedule a phone interview. Another time they actually just called me straight up and just started talking to me. This initial phone interview will more than likely be with a human resource person who is not necessarily the most tech savvy. They're not programming, you will never be programming with them. So remember, you are the expert in this situation. Don't sound snobby, but just know that, speak confidently, make sure you let them know that you know what you're talking about, especially considering if you're confident, these people, the HR people, generally won't know left from right. So just speak confident in order to get onto the next step. A lot of what these HR people will ask you is based on your resume. So don't lie on your resume. Make sure your projects, are up here so you can talk about them. What language did you use? Do you use any tool, uh, framework, technologies, what have you? Because the goal of this is to get past the HR people and get to the development team. After that phone interview, you'll be doing a bit of waiting. You can expect an email or a phone call from them confirming that you have moved forward in the process. And then that next step could either be a phone interview with a developer on the team or an in-person interview. For the most part, for me, I always did in-person interviews right after this, not by choice but that's how the process went. And in the room, there have been multiple developers on the team and then generally the HR person that you talked with on the phone prior. That interview can consist of anything from really picking your brain to make sure that you know your stuff all the way up to a whiteboard type interview. 
Sometimes they'll have that separate where that is the really pick your brain, make sure you know what you're talking about in person. You have the knowledge up here in order to prove you're talking, you're personable. That's one big thing about these interviews, it's just not technical. It is a lot of personal things. They try to read who you are. They wanna see if you're a good fit for the team, not just your skills, but your personality. And then the next interview or later in that interview, you will then do the whiteboard aspect of things. I've only heard that. I've never actually had to do a whiteboard interview. Thank goodness. And then after that, if everything went well, you get the job offer. And I understand this can sometimes be difficult for many people, but next step right after that, within this interview process step, would be negotiations. Now, just because they offer you X amount of dollars doesn't mean that's all they can pay you. There's negotiations that can happen, whether that be in stock or in bonuses, whatever type of company you're interviewing at. In particular, make sure you get decent benefits, and then your salary. Your salary needs to be something that you are okay with, and that if you're making that exact salary for one whole entire year, that you will be happy with that salary for that whole entire year. And then once negotiations are done, if you find a common ground, you are able to accept the job and uh, you're now a software developer, congratulations. But if you didn't get the job or you decided to turn down the job, rinse and repeat steps three and four, that would be job search and interview process. And if you are failing at step three, the job search, go all the way back to the first few steps, make sure your skills are where they need to be for the job market. So learn how to code more and more and more, all while maintaining and improving your previous steps, which were learning how to code, maintain and improve, and then your foundation for your job search, maintain and improve. So as a quick recap, because I went into a little bit more detail than I thought I was going to. I essentially thought this video was going to be more so about this recap that I'm about to tell you, but it didn't really go that way. Quick recap, have an ambition to code because if you don't, you're not going to be driven to actually learn how to code. Learn how to code, set up yourself properly with the things we discussed prior for the job search, lay your foundation, search for a job, many different jobs, apply to many different jobs and when you're applying, make sure you cater your resume to their job listing because a lot of times the HR people will be going through all of these resumes to see if they will line up with the job listing. So if they see, oh, their job listing has X, Y, and Z and you have X, Y, and Z, you're gonna be getting that phone interview, but don't lie. And then once you get that interview, go through the interview process, be personable, be professional, know your sh and then once you go through that, negotiate your price and accept the job if that's a job for you. If not, rinse and repeat, continue to get better and continue to look for a job. Man, even the recap was longer than I wanted it to be. Whatever. I'm not very good at consolidating my thoughts in just a few words. I ramble a lot. Maybe that's why I make videos. I appreciate your time. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like. Check out the rest of my channel if you like this video. I'm sure you'll like some other videos that I have on my channel, so be sure to subscribe because more videos like this are on the way. Don't forget to check out Skillshare because you can get it two months for free. And I like free. Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace.